Hi, everybody. Happy Sunday. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com with 2022 Bowman Chrome Baseball, a doubleheader. It's a nice way to start the day. Random team break number two. You, guys, you can tell the next doubleheader is loaded up. All card ship, of course. Two cases, random teams. Big thanks to this group for making it happen. Congrats to the people who won spots in the filler. And all 30 teams are in. Let's roll it. Let's randomize it. Five and a five, ten the hard way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Hey, Mike, thanks for, uh, thanks for taking the risk on it. It worked out this time. We've got Joe down to Matthew. Five and a five, ten the hard way for the teams. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and tenth and final time. After ten, we've got the Tigers down to the Brew Crew. All right, so here's how it shakes out. Joe with the Tigers and the Nationals. Matthew with the Padres. Wes with the Royals. Steven with the Cubs. Matthew with the A's. Joe with the Rockies. John with the Marlins. Sean with the White Sox. Matthew with the Rays. Joe with the Jays. Matthew with the Angels. Travis with the Reds. Matthew with, uh, with my Dodgers. Joe with the Diamondbacks. Scott with the Mariners. Adam with the Mets. Joe with the Pirates. Matthew with the Braves. Joe with the O's. Michael with the Red Sox. Chris Last spot, Mojo, Phillies. Matthew with the Cardinals. Bill with the Twins. Aaron with the Yankees. Michael with the Guardians. Joe with the Giants. Michael with the Rangers. Joe with the Astros. And Matthew with the Milwaukee Brewers. Nice. Let's alphabetize by team. And we are going to uh, open up the trade window. So while people are trading, we're going to pause the video. When we come back, we'll see if there's any trades. And then we'll have that dual case break. Stick around. We'll see you on the other side. All right, welcome back, everybody. No deals were done, so that list here on a Sunday remains the same. Thanks, thanks to the people spending a little bit of your Sunday with me. I appreciate that. All right, so that's the final printout. We've got both cases right here. Pop these open. I know. I could use I could use a little assistance, Chris. That'd be nice. But this this is a uh, this is a solo adventure for me here. But there's another another double header on the site. If we fill that up, you know, I think he comes in on Tuesday. If we fill it up by Tuesday. We might be able to have drag him in for a little help. So the hot stove in baseball still cooking a little bit, ladies and gentlemen. We had the uh, the Japanese pitcher Kodai Senga signing with the Mets on a five-year deal. It's about what 15 mil a year, which was not not too bad. Mets also re-signing Brandon Nemo to an eight-year deal. Blue Jays in agreement with Kevin Crimear. National did I say national signing Trevor Williams to a two-year deal? I did. Braves and, and, and Dancy Swanson reportedly had minimal negotiations this offseason. Met signing David Robertson. Ran Rangers signing Andrew Heaney to a two-year deal. Mets also have Quint Jose Quintana. And there is that Xander Bogart's 11-year deal. The Wilson Contreras deal. And so it looks like Carlos Rodon is seeking a seven-year deal. 
You're someone who's going to take a risk on Carlos Rodon for seven years. All right. There's Aaron Judge. He got a big payday, too. A lot of money being thrown out there in Major League Baseball. There's Zach Veen, 10 out of 199. It's a magenta shimmer for the Colorado Rockies. That's for Joe. I mean, if these guys are ever getting paid that much when he's a free agent after the 2023 season, what's he going to get paid? There's Jake Rucker for the Twins. And of course, as always with long breaks like this, we will do an autograph recap at the end. That's for Bill and the Twins. Nice. Wander Franco rookie going to Matthew and the Tampa Bay Rays. It's Dustin Harris for the Rangers to 250. Rangers uh, will go to Michael. That was 70 out of 250 on that Dustin Harris. The Spencer Torkelson rookies will go to Joe. And of course, uh, all card ship. So Bobby Wood Jr. and a Jorbit Vivas. Horbit Vivas? 001 out of 100. Atomic Refractor Parallel for my Dodgers, Matthew Shira. Your number 19 Dodgers prospect. I think that's what the Dodgers are looking to do. I think the Dodgers are looking to, looking to see what more of the youngsters can do. There's Roismar Quintana, 008 out of 199. That'll be for Joe and the Nationals. My guess is that there'll be once all this, all the free agent dust settles, that they might be more involved in the uh, trading deadline, or the the trade before spring training. That is in the trading market. You know, the Dodgers have a pretty highly touted touted farm system, so why not let some of the kids play? Let's see what we got. Maybe. Maybe uh, maybe there's the next, you know, Trey Turner in the system somewhere. The next Carlos Correa. I mean, they developed a Corey Seager. All some other guys too. So why not reset that luxury tax? And then there'll be some big free agents. I think after 2023. Which might also be interesting names to see in the uh, at the trading deadline too. Otani would headline the free agent class. My guess is he's gonna explore free agency. Especially if the Angels don't make the playoffs. There's Ryan Doncone, 34 out of 199 for the Dodgers. That'll be for Matthew. And Junior Sanchez, 81 out of 99. Green parallel for the fish. It's going to go to John. Logan, what's going on? Jazz Chisholm, also for the Marlins. 220 out of 250. They're looking to trade some peeps. And there's Jason Courier for Cleveland. That's going to be for Michael. Um, I think they said pretty much every, anybody, everybody except for Alcantara, 
is uh, is available on the pitching staff anyway. Dodgers were looking at Pablo Lopez last year, who would be a solid addition to that Dodgers staff. Here's uh, a twin for Bill. It's Danny De Andrade. There is Ricardo Cabrera, 207 out of 299. And the speckle for the Reds, that's for Travis, that's going to be to 299. Got a little Lakers basketball on the background, the last game of their road trip. I did say that if the Lakers can go 3-3 three and three on this road trip, that I'd be happy. If they beat the Pistons tonight, they'll be 3-3 three and three on the road trip. Although after they beat the Bucks, and towards the beginning of the road trip, and then the Wizards right after that, there was a little feeling that, that the Lakers would... Maybe be four and two, five and one on the road trip, which would have been amazing, but no, it didn't quite work out that way. Anthony Davis has the flu, got knocked out of a game early on. Played last game, only missed that one game, but still. Third quarter in this one, they still gotta, still gotta hang on. There's a Yasser Mercedes. That'll be for the Twins, that'll be for Bill. And another Junior Sanchez, this time purple. 34 out of 250, purple chrome for John. Nice. There's a speckle, Denzer Guzman, 239 out of 299, Matthew with the Halos. Wes, you'll get all the uh, Bobby Wood Jr. rookie cards. It'd be weird seeing him in a Cardinals uniform. All the Marte, these uh, shimmer cards, not numbered, but all card ship. And there's Ian Lewis for John and the Marlins. So Wander Franco, Ricardo Cabrera to 250. Spencer Torkelson going to Joe. The Ricardo for Travis and the Reds. And the Wander Franco for Matthew Shira and the Rays. Baseball break, but 
It's a double header, so we'll, we'll definitely float around some different sports here as well. So here on a Sunday, the uh, wow, the Suns dropping another game to the Pelicans. They're on a that's that's four losses in a row for the Suns. Now that that I don't know if you watched this game on uh, the other night, but uh, the Pelicans are cruising. There's a little uh, little fast break for Zion, and did some sort of windmill dunk or something like that, which, you know, they were up double digits, I think, and I think the Suns, at that point in time, I think the Suns were, were uh, I think the Suns were, uh, took objection to that, so there's a little bit of, a little pushing and shoving, a little holding me backs. And I thought the Suns would come out Firing, but I guess just I guess the uh, I guess the, the Pelicans just match up well with the Suns. Yeah, hey Logan, your Jazz are looking pretty good too. All the other games are in progress. We got Rockets leading the Bucks, thirty-eight, thirty-four. Four minutes left in the first half. At halftime, Hawks are up fifty-eight, fifty on the Bulls. Sixers up 91-82 in the third, almost the end of the third, on the Hornets. Magic up on the Raptors, 73-64. to A couple minutes left in the third. Knicks are up 85-71, a few minutes left in the third. And at the end of the third, going to the fourth quarter, Lakers up by one at 91-90 in Detroit. There's an O'Neal Cruz for the Pirates, that's for Joe. Yeah, Logan's Jazz play uh, the Pelicans twice. I think first one on Tuesday. Oh, nice Bobby Witt Jr. Refractor. 189 out of 499. That'll go to Wes and the Royals. Leonardo Balcazar, 2 out of 75. Yellow parallel for the Reds, Travis. That'll be a nice test for the Jazz. Jazz are still, still holding above 500. They're 15 and 14. There's Hedbert Perez to 150 for the Brew Crew, Matthew Shira. I think um, Jazz had a really nice start to the season. Cooled off a little bit, but it's still it's still looking pretty good. Still looking feisty. So Julio Rodriguez for Scott and the Mariners. We got Benjamin Cowles for the Yankees. That's going to go to Aaron. Got randomized the Yankees. Jonathan Mejia, 37 out of 299. Speckle parallel for the Redbirds. It'll be from Matthew. We've got a nice Roderick Arias here for Aaron and the Yankees. All right, that's the first third of the case. Second, third coming up. We still have another another case to go. So relax, settle in. Quick look at the NBA standings. We got in the East. Boston has yet to lose double-digit games. There's two teams, six losses in the East. Boston and Milwaukee. Cavs, Nets, Sixers, Pacers, 
round out the top six. Hawks, Knicks, Raptors, Heat are in those play-in spots with the Bulls and the Wizards kind of a game or so behind. In the West, Pelicans are your first place, you're your first overall in the conference. They're 18 and 8. And they looked pretty good last year without Zion, especially when CJ McCollum joined that team. I think that was just a perfect fit there. Now that they got a got a healthy Zion back, I think Brandon Ingram might be playing. They're nine of their last, they've won nine of their last ten. They're 18 and 8. Haven't lost double digit games yet. Neither have the Grizzlies. They're 17 and 9. Game behind the Pelicans. Then rounding out the top six, Nuggets, Suns, uh, Kings, Blazers. Clippers, Warriors, Jazz, Mavs are in those play-in spots. Minnesota's just on the outside looking in. Oklahoma City a couple games back of a play-in spot, and the Lakers a few games back of a play-in spot. Next box. Behind Kyle Lewis is Tyler Collins. 217 out of 299. Speckle autograph for the Braves. Matthew. A Bowman Incensions Orange, Jordan Walker. These fall one per case, generally. Nice. That's for Matthew Sherratt and the Cardinals. Nice Jordan Walker, 17 out of 25. That orange does look nice. That really pops. Logan saw Rudy Gay at a children's cancer place. Nephew met him. He's so, yeah, how tall is Rudy Gay? Yeah, basketball players, different level of their heights. Uh, 493 out of 499, Chris Bryant. And there's Junior Perez, Oakland A's. That's for Matthew. Oh, nephew didn't know who he was. Not a jazz fan. Come on, nephew. So there's the Jason Cooper for Cleveland and the Chris Bryant for Colorado. That's for Joe. Christian Vaccaro. And that's a nice name there. It's for Joe as well. Marcelo Meyer. To 299. Oh, and another one. Yeah, sometimes you can get two in a case. It's Jason Dominguez. That's going to go to Aaron Billingsley and the Yankees. That's pretty cool. The Marcelo Myers Speckle from Michael F. and the Red Sox. That's a two ninety nine. Sunday, so that means got a lot of NFL action happening here. I'm going to switch over to that uh, Dolphins Chargers game once this Lakers game is over. Well, the week started on Thursday with an awful loss for my for my Raiders. Well, stunning. Just Ra Raiders finding new and more embarrassing ways to lose, seemingly every every week, every other week. Panthers beat the Seahawks 30 to 24. That's a big win for the Panthers. They might be, could be on the outside of looking in for a potential playoff spot. 
Niners, I, does, I guess it doesn't really matter who's playing quarterback. They're looking amazing. 35 to 7, beating the Buccaneers in San Francisco easily. They were shutting out the Buccaneers until the third quarter. Also, going back to that Panthers game, Sam Darnold? Is he back? Maybe. Don't know. He's got a second chance, though. Chiefs looked like they were going to cruise, and then the uh, then, uh, then the Broncos made things interesting. But the Chiefs won. Chiefs beat the Broncos 38-28. 34-28, to 28, that is. Ravens improved to nine and four without Lamar Jackson. And I think uh, Kenny Pickett got knocked out of the game. He's in concussion protocol. And then Trubisky, three picks after, uh... ooh, after Pickett went out. Look at this. Henry Davis, red shimmer for the Pirates. Joe Simone. That's a train whistle. No, it's not. It's a shimmer. It's 5 out of 10. I thought it was going to be out of 5. That's still nice, though, for your former number one overall pick. Fooled me there. I was excited. Still nice. Still nice. Got an orange Yendry Rojas, one out of 25. That'll be for Matthew and the Padres. The orange parallels always pop real nicely. We got a Jason Curio, nice. 66 out of 150, blue parallel for Cleveland. Michael. With that one, Michael F. And there's Wilson Contreras. 45 out of 150. Going to be weird seeing him in a Cardinals uniform. And then we've got an Antonio Pinheiro, 007. Out of two fifty. Do 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 goes to Matthew and the Brew Crew. There's a another base wander Franco for the Rays. There's a Averson Arteaga. Fourteen out of seventy five. It's actually this it look almost looked orange. It's a yellow parallel. For my rivals, the Giants, that's for Joe. All right, another box. So I guess Trubisky is not it. How about them Eagles? Eagles beat the Giants 48 to 22. Jalen Hurts scores his 10th rushing TD of the season. Man. What a turnaround for uh, what a not a turnaround, but what an evolution of Jalen Hurts. 21 for 31 passing, 217 yards, two passing touchdowns. And he rushed for a touchdown. Yeah, Trubisky, I mean, is he even worth being a backup? Not even a little bit, yeah. I mean, they, they got a... 
I, I mean, I don't know what is is his contract just a season long. Can't can't be more than a year or two, right? So hopefully the commitment isn't too long. Yeah, put put more dust on the Trubisky rookies. Usually, I'm telling people to dust off rookie cards, but in this case, no need to hang on to those. I think. Unless you're like Mitch Trubisky's parents or something like that. Maybe they're holding on to it. Jaguars beat the Titans 36 to 22. Um, I'm pretty pleased, uh, although this was in a fantasy league that I'm, where I'm not going to make the playoffs, but I'm glad I left Evan Ingram on the bench, who had 11 catches for 162 yards and two touchdowns. And Cade Marlowe, Mariners. That's going to be Scott Goodman with the M's. Hopefully you can find some, like, well, more autos, but maybe some Julio Rodriguez, low-numbered cards. J.D. Martinez, 3 out of 75, I think. He's still out there. No one's picked him up yet. Joe with the Nationals. Got a Jake Berger refractor. 35 out of 4.99. Oh, almost missed that. There's an Ivan Johnson Arizona Fall League auto. That's for the Red Legs. That's going to go to Travis. Forty six out of eighty seven. The lone Reds representative in the twenty twenty one Fall Stars game. Nice, someone to look out for, little middle infielder looks like. Although nowadays I mean it's like uh, it's like the modern NBA. It's like there's positionless basketball in the NBA. Oscar Colas. Now just there seems to be so many more players. Playing different with the ability to play different positions. So, a lot more athletes around can play around different positions. All right, another box. Yeah. Uh, Mike F was like, I unloaded Trubisky when he had that okay ish year that one time. So he knew. Are we waiting for that uh, Trubisky to open up the Mr. Biscuit fast food franchise? My understanding is that he doesn't like that nickname. Uh, Lions. Look at the Lions. You're six and seven Lions now. Are they in the hunt for a playoff spot? We'll take a look at the playoff picture in, in these later boxes. James and Williams hauling in his first career TD on a 41-yard catch. So now Jared Goff, who, you know, may not be... You know, it, he not, may not be an impressive quarterback, but but he's decent and give any decent quarterback a good offensive line, a solid running game, and weapons he can throw to. It's gonna, you know, that's going to be pretty good. That's pretty good for him. He, he went 27 for 39. No, didn't take a sack, no interceptions. All right, three touchdown passes. You know, and then you got like Jamal Williams with 16 carries with only 37 yards, but they had 
you know, they had DeAndre Swift with six carries. Justin Jackson had, had four carries, et cetera, et cetera. And they pieced together a 134-yard rushing day, enough to keep defenses honest, right? DJ Shark, six catches, 94 yards, a touchdown. Amonra St. Brown, six catches, 68 yards. Josh Reynolds, five catches, 51 yards. Jamison Williams' only catch was that 41-yarder for the touchdown. So that's not bad. I think there was a bit of a comeback by the Vikings too, but it just just wasn't enough. That's a big division matchup there. There's Josar Garcia for the Phillies to 250. Purple Shimmer. For the fight in Phils, that'll be for Chris. And there's Denzel Clark, 144 out of 499. And the Lakers still up, 112-104 with four minutes left. Just make sure they, they, they don't lose focus. Let's get that, get, get, get that W, go back home. There's Bryson Stott, purple chrome to 250. For Chris and the fight and fills. Oh, and a redemption. It's Braxton Fulford, Colorado Rockies. It's going to go to Joe. And then Aaron Ashby, Aqua, 107 to 199 for the Brewers. Matthew Shira. And there you go. Coming up, the final third of the first case, and we got another one coming up. All right, so good job for Jameson Williams. I think he tore his ACL in a national championship game earlier this year, like in January. And made made the recovery, and you know, in his what second start, second game touchdown already. That was and that was the big, big pick for the for the line, the big first round pick. Uh, Cowboys coming back, A little rally to beat the Texans twenty seven to twenty three. Bengals looks like looks like they've, I don't know, I feel like they had. A sort of uh, a rough start at the beginning of the season, but you, you blink now and they're nine and four and they're five and one at home. They beat the Browns twenty three to ten. That uh, that revamped offensive line seems to be really clicking now, and you know protecting Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow using his legs a little bit more. We like to see that. He's become a Josh Allen type of quarterback. He's got a healthy Jamar Chase after he lost him for four or five games in the middle of the season. So that defense is solid. Bills improved 10 and three. They beat the Jets 20-12. Jets, Jets defense putting some big hits on, on Mike White. Jets are still seven and six. And then I think in about, in about uh, it might be perfect time, in about 10 minutes or so, Dolphins at Chargers. There's Luis Gill, 177 to 299. For the Yankees, that's going to be for Aaron. Mike was asking earlier, are the Bears set at QB, considering they'll have a high draft pick? I think so. I think I think I think I think they're very happy about. It. They got to be very happy about that, knowing that they've got, you know, what should be their QB 
for the future, the near future anyway. It's Kevin Kendall, refractor for the Mets. That'll be for Adam. And so now I think they've got to, I mean, they've got a lot of pieces to add, but, you know, I think it's got to start with with the offensive line. They, gotta, they, gotta now, they now have to protect that quarterback, Justin Fields. I mean, yeah, it's amazing seeing what he can do with his legs, but, you know, you don't want him to do that too often. And then get get some get some get some people they can throw to. There's Yasser Mercedes. That's a nice one. Twins. Bill with the twins. That's one of the one of the bigger names for the twins. I think the big name for the twins, if you ever get them. And there's Henry Mendez to 125. For the Brew Crew. That'll be for Matthew. Yeah. We just 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 a lot of guys. Just a lot of guys around uh around Justin Fields. Just the guys. That's not enough. I think a little offensive line help. I think they got they got a decent defense. I mean they can improve in all areas, but you know, let's at least start with protecting the quarterback. Get him a weapon or two. Another guy that could run the ball, maybe. A pass catcher or two. Or a pass catcher. You maybe you can find someone in free agency as well. They must have some decent amount of cap space. Are the Lions actually good or is this a trap? I don't know. Well, I meant, I meant the big... big for, it wasn't James, James Williams is not a first rounder. I thought he was like a late first rounder. I thought he had two picks. Their big offensive pickup of the year. That's what the people care about. Especially when he's scoring touchdowns for fantasy teams. But I, I mean, the lines are good, but I, I don't know if it's really a trap per se. The lines are good, obviously, but I don't think they're. You know, I don't think they're good enough. Not this season, anyway. But I think it's. Uh, I think it's a good sign for the future. I think you know another draft, another uh, another draft, and another round of free agency. I think would put them in a good, uh, I mean, a good spot for the future. Maybe even draft a QB too in like third or fourth round and have them marinate behind Jared Goff. And if they have that, if they have a good offensive line, you know, any decent young quarterback should should find some success behind there. There's Andy Thomas, 424 out of 499. Yeah, they have the first round Rams pick, right? Yeah, I think they're headed in the right direction for the first time in a long time. There's Scott and the Mariners. Yeah, Steve Bird saying line to the top offense and worst defense. Time to load up on defense. There's 35 out of 75. Yeah, it seems like the offense is clicking. If, yeah. So it makes, makes the off season a little bit easier. You can just kind of focus on one sector of the team. There's Heliot Ramos, 244 out of 299. There's Michael Hernandez for the Orioles. That's going to be for Joe. Let 
We got a Jason Curio here, Cleveland. But the Lions are, are a good story, though. They are. They're six and seven, and just behind the seven and six Seahawks, and then the Giants have the seventh playoff spot in the NFC. It's four thirty nine out of four nine. Noel V. Marte. So this might might come down to the last week to see who gets the last playoff spot. But ultimately. Yeah, what, I mean, what's the ceiling? Mike F. was saying, I think the line's good, but they're just not legit contenders yet. I don't think anything's going to really happen past the first round. It'd be a cool story to see him in the playoffs, but... Let's see. Mike's looking, Mike's looking for a few more autos from Case 2. Guess what, Mike? Good news. We're not even done with Case 1. We've got, one, we've got four autographs left. I can get you a few right here. How about that? I wouldn't give up on this first case just yet. Get a few autos right out of here, a few, few more out of the second case. Things could turn around just like that. So I guess the Eagles currently have the first round, first round by. They're number one overall in the NFC. They're 12 and one. With that loss by the Vikings today, they're 10 and three. So it might be a little bit difficult to chase down the Eagles at this point. Then Niners in the third spot. Buccaneers are in the fourth. Oh, right, because they're leading that bad uh, NFC South. That's why they're, they have a playoff spot. Uh, and then Dallas is in the fifth spot. Could be a kind of a scary fifth seed right there. And the Commanders, seven and five. They have a tie break over the Giants. And then it's the Giants. Right, yeah, that defense has got to improve for the Lions if they that's their next step. But if you're a Lions fan living out there, there's 24 on 99 Henry Mendez. At least, uh, at least you can you can go go to a, go to a ball game knowing that they're gonna they're gonna keep they're gonna at least make things exciting. You know you know they're gonna put points on the board. There's JT Schwartz, 83 out of 299. Speckle for the Mets, Adam. Got Henry Davis for the Pirates. That's going to be for Joe. It's to 250. Got that nice red shimmer out of 10 earlier, which I thought was a tr was going to be a train whistle initially, but, but no, I guess just the straight reds, not not the parallels. The variations. O'Neill Cruz for Joe and the Pirates. And there's Colin Burns. It's Joe with the Orioles. Got a Leover Piguero. 47 out of 199. There's a Yankil Fernandez for Colorado. That's going to go to Joe and the Rockies. And Joe also had, as the Pirates, he's had a lot of teams in this. All right, final box of the first case. Two more autos left. Fingers crossed, everybody. Defense by the Lakers on that Pistons possession. Needed that. They're up 122, 117. 
with 1.8 seconds left. Over in the AFC, let's look at the playoff picture there. Bills and Chiefs are both 10-3, but the uh, Bills have the tiebreaker over the Chiefs based on head-to-head -head win percentage. So they currently have that, that first round by. Kansas City's in the two spot. Ravens at 9-4, 3. Texans, 7-6. Bengals, fifth seed at nine and four. Dolphins at eight and four. Could improve to nine and four after tonight. And the Jets are seven and six. On the outside looking in, your six and six Patriots, six and six Chargers. Looking to try to move ahead of the Jets. And then I think just too far away for teams like the Jaguars, the Raiders, the Browns, the Steelers are all five and eight. And the Lakers win 124-117. to 117. Which means I can switch over to the Sunday Night Football game. Dolphins at Chargers. I did not notice any uptick in traffic on the freeway. Due to the Chargers game. So, I don't know. Actually, it was... It was Couple hours ago, I guess. JT Schwartz for the Mets, Adam. So I suppose maybe people are already there and they're just going late, or maybe there's just not a lot of Chargers fans in LA rushing to the game. There's JD Martinez, 47 out of 99. Boston, Torkelson. Torkelson rookie going to Detroit. That'll be for Joe. The J.D. Martinez, who's not re-signed yet. That goes to Michael F. And the Red Sox. And the Wander Franco will go to uh, Matthew S. And the Rays. We got Juan Yepes. Magenta, 67 out of 299. And our final autograph of this case is Jonathan Mejia, 462 out of 499 refractor autograph for the Redbirds. Matthew Shira with that. All right, so Michael F., yeah, we are looking to the second case now. For you and everyone else who didn't go hitless here or who went hitless in the first case, there's a second case coming up. But wait, there's more, like a good infomercial. There's Cabrian Hayes. And Roderick Arias for Aaron. space here to accommodate the second case. RF, did Pick Your Team 12 happen yet? I'm not sure. There is a schedule though, if you want to check that. that's even sold out yet. I think there's a team random for that if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Steve Birch was saying, I think the NFL players are gonna be a lot of fun to watch. There isn't any one team That'll just have an easy in. Yeah, it's Mike F trying to speak some big hits into existence.
Wait, did pick your team 12 happen? See first thing? Isn't that in a filler? Well, actually, the only picker team 12 on the site, RF, is Flawless Collegiate Football Picker Team 12. I thought you were talking about baseball. That's, uh, that still has 13 spots left. If you look at the site, it says spots left 13. If you're talking about Bowman Chrome, we're already on picker team 19. So if you look at our video list, picker team 12 must have happened a week or so ago. All right. Um, basketball hit parade was that at number 12 that was a random team though right that wasn't a picker team so let's play the uh, if the if, if the playoff started today Bowman Chrome 19 no if you look at the site you'll notice that um, that there is still a filler that we gotta do a team random and there's always a schedule RF if you click the, the link that Nightbot just dropped, where it says click the link for break schedule, shipping info and more, if you click that link, it'll take you to a Google spreadsheet with the schedule. And then you can just look at the schedule. I'll, I'll usually, um, I'll make sure that we do, uh, we post the breaks or write down the breaks that, we, we, that we've done, highlight the one that we're doing. And if we have breaks sold out in the future, we'll also write that down as well. So that way, even if, uh, even if I'm not on air or maybe I'm stepped away or something like that, then um, you'll be able to, uh, to see that schedule. Well, that's, uh, yeah, if, I'll, for the, I'll say again that there is actually a filler we have to do for that RF. I know it says sold out, but we pulled, that we pulled the teams out of there and we put them into a filler called a team random, which will sell out Bowman Chrome Hobby number 19. So it's kind of sold out, not officially sold out. There's Leonardo Balcazar. And again, if it's sold out, we will, uh, we will put it on the schedule. That way you'll know. Thanks, RF. Get back to this now. This break's going to take you long enough anyway. Rangers, Michael F. with Texas. That's 250. Right, Mike's being specific. He's looking for, he's like, come on, Curio. He had, actually has Cleveland. He's looking for Jason Curio, not, not Jackson. Both would be nice, though. I'd love to pull both. Here's Alexander Ovalis. That would be for Matthew Shira and the. Tampa Bay Rays, that's with the spot that he won in the filler. And there's Edward Cabrera Aqua, 154 to 199. Yeah, we got it. the color's nice. Let's get some ink on it. If the playoffs ended today, the NFL playoffs ended today, or if the regular season ended today, if the playoffs are today, I guess the Chiefs would be, so the number one best record in the AFC and the NFC get those first round buys. So the six remaining teams will square off against each other, right? So it'll be Chiefs, Jets, I think, two and seven, Ravens and Dolphins, the three and six seed, and then... Titans Bengals, I think would would how, would be how that works. And I, I think the Jets the Jets are gonna get smoked by the Chiefs. Ravens Dolphins should be a really interesting matchup. It should be Dolphins, but if the Ravens are full strength, that could be a, that could be really interesting. And Titans Bengals. 
It might be closer than people think, but I think the Bengals pull that off in the end. Do they reseed now after that? I forget. They, they did mix up the rules just a little bit a year or two ago, so I guess we'll find out as we get closer to the playoffs. Uh, in the NFC, the Eagles would get the first round by. And then the Vikings... What a catch by Mike Williams. Uh, Vikings would play the Giants, Niners would play the Commanders, and the Buccaneers would play the Cowboys. If the playoffs are today. Uh, Vikings-Giants, I think that's going to be interesting. I, you would think Vikings, but I feel like the, I think the Giants could, you know, Kirk Cousins... Prime time or in a in a big game, sometimes the Vikings have just been unlucky sometimes too. But I would lean uh, I would lean Vikings there. As Eric Hernandez, I think it's gonna be good. Maybe I'll lean Giants. I don't know. Eric Hernandez, eleven out of fifty for the White Sox. That's for Sean Maddock. All right, so we got a blue Colson Montgomery for the White Sox, 118, 116 out of 150. It's a little little action for the White Sox here. And O'Neill Cruz, rookie card for Joe. We got a Jason Curio for Cleveland, that's for Michael F. We got the Jeremy Pena for the Astros, that'll be for Joe. And we got a Danier Cueva, Rangers, Michael F. There we go. It's one of your teams there. Some ink. The number 23 Rangers prospect, Corner Baseball America. We got a Leonardo Balcazar for the Reds for Travis to 125. All right, third box of the second and final case. Good luck. Working on a fresh case now. So we're still looking for case hits. We were looking for some autographs that maybe we didn't see in the first half. So once again, in the NFC, if the playoffs ended today, Eagles, if the playoffs are today, Eagles would get the uh, first round by Vikings, Giants. I think, I, I think that's gonna be a good game. I think maybe Giants could get a little edge there. Then it'd be Niners, Commanders. I think Niners take care of business pretty easily against the Commanders. I think. And then Buccaneers, Cowboys. Man, the Buccaneers just aren't looking good yet. Right? If they had, playoffs started right now. You gotta go. You gotta go with the Cowboys to win comfortably. Did number four just sell out? Nice, actually. So as I promised, let me just interrupt this break for a second. I'm gonna take a spot out of Eminence. A full spot out. If you're re-watching this video, Bowman Chrome Peeps, you can just fast forward through this part. If you're watching live, just bear with me here. So I'm going to take out a full spot. And create another filler for this.
All right. Thanks for your patience, Bowman Chrome Peep. So we got another filler loaded up. Now one full spot left. That's it. Yeah, I mean, you're right. There's still some games left. Obviously, the season does not end today. The playoffs do not start today. If the Bucks keep playing at this level, they might not even make the playoffs. Playoffs? So, yeah, currently, Carolina actually looking like they're playing some good football. Wow, and the Chargers just went four and out, about three yards away, at, pretty much at the goal line. Yeah, Carolina's chasing them down. Carolina looks, for now, they, they look like they've got a little, uh, a little mojo with them. All right, there's Ian Lewis for the fish. John Fernandez, Marlins. And we got a Luis Meza, 113 out of 250 for the Blue Jays. That's going to be for Joe Simone. Julio Rodriguez for Seattle for Scott. We got a Harlan Susanna, 10 out of 150. Nice blue parallel there. And that's going to go to the Padres. That's for Matthew and the Friars. All right, there's Eddie's Leonard for the Dodgers, Matthew, and the O'Neill Cruz for Joe. Yeah, Mike's also saying Bucks look awful. Not sure if it's the old line or Brady or both. Might be a little bit of both. Yeah, not bad for a 45-year-old, but I don't know. Maybe he, yeah, the offensive line could need a little work. You know, you think that he, you think that he has the pass catchers, but I don't know. Just something doesn't seem to be clicking there. Maybe no safety blanket with, with Gronk, without Gronk there. Maybe that's part of it as well. But yeah, they're not looking good. And they still have to face not, not an easy schedule. They got to face, uh, they're hosting Cincinnati. And the Bengals seem to be rolling pretty nicely. And they're at Arizona. Which I guess is a winnable game, but it's still a road game. Then I, I would imagine this game would be the crucial one. They're hosting Carolina on New Year's Day. And then their final game of the season will be at Atlanta, who might be interested in playing a little spoiler. Although Atlanta's five and eight, <laughs> I mean, they could, uh, and they're on a bye this week, right? Atlanta's five and eight. Uh, I think they're going to start uh, Desmond Ritter the rest of the way, right? So, I mean, that, that could provide an interesting spark in a division that is still very much winnable. Which is crazy to think about. Joe with the Tigers. Matthew with the Rays. 
Byron Buxton for the Twins Refractor, 387 out of 499. That will be for Bill. And Jason Curio, 130 out of 499. Michael, with the spot that he won in the filler, got randomized the Guardians in the double header and gets the nice Jason Curio refractor autograph. Cleveland, this is for you. Boom, says Michael. Nice. Congrats. That's what we were waiting for. There's Matt Olson for the Braves for Matthew. You're welcome, Mike. Yeah, just had to wait for the second case. Thankfully, there was a second case. And we're, we're, we're not even close to being done in this second case. There's Jackson Joe, Purple Shimmer, 233 out of 250. That'll be for Detroit Joe. And there's Jojo Blackman. Michael F. There you go, Mike. Another one. Back to back. He's heating up. He's on fire. Pete Crow Armstrong for the Cubbies. Stephen Carney to four ninety nine. Mike, was it you who were saying that, that Dolphins coach looks a little awkward during press conferences? <laughs> yeah, he's kind of like a Jordan Yamamoto in every case. Like, is, is he the modern NFL coach now? Just like these young, geeky-looking kids? Which is cool, but I mean, is, that, is, that the, is that the shift? You know, once like, once like Mike McCarthy's, the Mike McCarthy's and Andy Reid's of the world start to retire, they'll just be like a group of guys that look like you know, Sean McVay or Kingsbury or or Mike McDaniel. Now the Falcons the rest of the way, we're going back to that, the Falcons the rest of the way, because they're 5-8, and eight, they're just a game behind Tampa Bay. They're tied with Carolina, both of them. I, I guess the Saints, who are 4-9, and nine, still have an outside chance at winning this, this, this division so bad. And there's still like four games left for each of these teams. But Falcons at the Saints, at Baltimore, versus Arizona, versus Tampa Bay. This could be a... I mean... As bad as that division is record-wise, it might be an exciting finish. Are there any other uh, divisions that could still be got? There's Garrett Mitchell, green shimmer to 99. Maybe we'll take a look at that in the next box that I rip open here. But just glancing at the standings. There's Gerard Gonzalez. That'll be for Wes and the Royals. I mean, I think though, the NFC South, there's Christian Yelich to 199 for the Brew Crew. Might be the only division where all four teams have a shot at winning the division. Usually at this stage of the season, it's always one or two teams who are just like, yeah, I mean, they're not gonna. They're not even gonna be close to winning the division. They have no shot at winning the division in most cases. The NFC South might might have all four teams 
you know, thinking that, hey, well, if the chips fall the right way, we might win a division. There's MJ Melendez, 255 out of 299. And there's Michael Garcia, West with the Royals. He's heating up. Yeah, speaking of yells, is he done? Mike's asking, or can he regain some of that MVP form? Kind of crazy if you think about nice shades of graziness. Wilman Diaz to 25, 16 out of 25. It's crazy to think both uh, two MVPs, Cody Bellinger, around the same time. Cody Bellinger and Yelich. Who have just, you know, due to injury, etc., just has not, they've just not looked good after their MVP years. All right. After this box, we'll be halfway through the final case, the last case, the second case. I don't know if 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 Yellis can do it. I, I wonder if. If the Brewers, I think he still has a number of years left in the contract, but if he doesn't maybe turn it around in the next year or so, if maybe they'll just try to, you know, try to move on from him somehow. Maybe there'll be a team willing to trade for him if the Brewers eat some contract and maybe a change of scenery might be... Uh, might be what Yelich needs. It seems like the Brewers are kind of. It just seemed like they're they're kind of entering a sort of a rebuild stage, right? I think the uh, I think manager Craig Council was interviewed during the winter meetings, and it seemed like they were they were like, yeah, we're interested in, in calling up some youngsters, maybe even Jackson Curio at some point. Jason Curio's brother from Cleveland. I might even think of. Calling up Jackson Curio, still pretty young. Just give him a taste of the big leagues and see if they can maybe catch some Juan Soto-ish lightning in a bottle. But um, but yeah, so they might be interested in uh playing the youngsters and then maybe maybe trade Yelich in a season or two if, if he's just not really helping out. As a Dodgers fan, the Dodgers link has been, Dodgers link has been maybe, maybe the Dodgers trade for Willie Ademis. Play, has a decent glove and I think has a little pop in that bat. Could play that shortstop position. And then maybe also pry uh, Corbin Burns away and put him in that Dodgers rotation. They could use a little bit of help there in the starting rotation. There's Jason Curio for Cleveland. Christian Vaccaro. And there's Parker Shavers. Green to 99, that's for Stephen Carney. Yeah, yeah, I, I, you know, Bellinger was, Cody Bellinger is still a fan favorite out here. He's, he's well-liked, but you know, it was not a surprise that the Dodgers let him walk. Nice Christian Vaccaro refractor for Joe Simone. Nationals. It's kind of stuff we like to see here. 266 out of 499. Got a Kyle Tucker refractor to 499. Ooh, and another Arizona. We saw one in the first case. Here's another Arizona Fall League autograph. Gabriel Moreno. That's for the Bluebirds. That's going to go to Joe Simone. That is 7 out of 31. I'm not sure what the. Uh, must be a link somewhere, but but why the the weird numbering? The other one was like out of like forty two or something random like that. There's Jackson Job to ninety nine. 
All right, the Kyle Tucker refractor for Joe and the Strohs. Yeah. There must be a reason. Is that Gabriel Moreno's number, maybe? Was that his fall league number? All right, halfway through the case, folks. Got about another, what, 20, 30 minutes to go. Good luck, everybody. We'll do an autograph recap as well. A uh, quick look back at NFL division races. What are we looking at here in, what, week 14 is it already? Jeez. Um, Buffalo's 10 and 3. Dolphins could be 9 and 4 after this game, so there's still a race for the division there. Jets on the outside looking in 7 and 6, Patriots 2, 6 and 6. Uh, Ravens and Bengals hide at 9 and 4. I don't think the Browns or the Steelers are going to catch them, but it'll just come down to the wire for the Ravens and, and Bengals. Ravens still grinding out wins, and the Chiefs, or the Chiefs, the, the Bengals are just, are just looking good. They're really starting to click. AFC South, believe it or not, the Jaguars are only a couple of games behind uh, the Titans. Titans are seven and six. Jaguars are five and eight. I could come down to the last game. It's like the the Chief, I feel like the Chiefs are in charge of this division, even if the Chargers win tonight. If the Chargers win, they'll improve to seven and six. Um, I don't think they're going to catch the Chiefs. Believe it or not, the Cowboys are only two games behind in the NFC. Cowboys are only two games behind the Eagles. We'll, we'll take a closer look at the NFC after this box. There's Josh Donaldson to 150, blue for Aaron and the Yankees. There's Nolan Arenado, Refractor to 499, 49 out of 499. For Matthew and the Cardinals, another Roderick Arias for Aaron. Let's see if we can find some parallels or some ink for that dude. Here's Kevin Kendall, 23 out of 499. For the Metropolitans, that'll be for Adam Ledette. A top 200 prospect in all of baseball. And a Matt Manning, red, there it is. I was fooled by the red shimmer. This one's just a straight red, like a, like a red card in soccer. And a train whistle, one out of five, Matt Manning, rookie, red. Joe Simone and the Tigers, Joe, all aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo woo. Nice, congrats. We got Jordan Walker, 10 out of 199. That is for Matthew and the Cardinals. And another JoJo Blackman for for Michael F. in Texas. Starting your uh, starting your JoJo Blackman PC, whether you intended to or not. Former two sport athlete with plus speed stands tall in the box, uh, creating leverage and loft. Extends through contact to amplify power. Strong arm defender. I mean, sounds pretty good. His given name is Javon. I 
There's Edison Polino to 299. That'll be for for Michael and the Red Sox. All right. Well, now we have to root for him, Mike. Now we have to hope that he's going to be a perennial All Star. All right, going back to the NFL really quick. Yeah, the Cowboys are only a couple games behind the Eagles. I don't know if they're going to catch the Eagles, but both teams are on a four-game win. Or have, both have four-game winning streaks. Both have similar point differentials. Too. That's one. That's another thing to look at in these matchups. Eagles are plus one thirty-eight. Cowboys are plus one thirty-one. That might have helped with the game last week. Might have helped for the Cowboys, but um, Cowboys could could make things a little interesting. Especially if the Eagles stumble a little bit. I don't think they will, but if they do, there could be a little opening there for the boys. Commanders and the Giants are just too far away at seven wins apiece. I think the Lions aren't going to have to look for a wild card spot. They're four wins behind the Vikings. Even with even after that win today over the Vikings. Packers at five wins. Bears, I think, last week were the first team eliminated officially from playoff contention. Now we talked about the NFC South. How <laughs> the Saints are in, uh, are in the cellar at four and nine, but that's only two wins behind Tampa Bay with six wins, and they lost today too. So, so I mean, there's a window for all the teams there, which is kind of crazy to say. Right, if the chips fall the right way, I mean the Saints could end up winning that division. They're only two games behind. If they if they win out, they put themselves in a good spot. Eight and nine, and eight and nine, eight and nine might win you that NFC South. It's crazy as that sounds. And I think uh, I think it's just I think the Niners are going to cruise in that NFC West. I would think they're a couple games ahead of the Seahawks. Seahawks are primed for a, uh, maybe if the Seahawks won today, it might have been a little bit of a better chance, but I think the Niners should win that division. Seattle should get a wild card spot locked in. There's Willie Vasquez. Tampa Bay for Matthew. Now Mike saying Cowboys will do what they always do. Regular season greatness followed by playoff incompetency. 151 out of 250, Videl Bruhan, Tampa Bay. Rockies, that's Joe. Tampa Bay is Matthew. Yasir Mercedes, Bill, and the Twins. Yeah, I mean, Cowboys just can't get over that playoff hump, huh? There's Jay Allen, Purple Shimmer, 157 out of 250. And there's Parker Shavers for the Cubs. That'll be for Stephen Carney. Yeah, oh, you're a, Mike's a Commanders fan. We'd love to see that. All right, so we got some Purple Shimmer, Jay Allen for the Reds. That's for Travis. That's 250. We got some Speckle here. That's Joey Weimer for the Brewers. That's going to be for Matthew Shira, 140 out of 299. And we got Jeremy Pena, rookie card for Joe and the Astros. Is it, you think this is the year, Steve Birch? They got, they got a healthy Dak Prescott. Tony Pollard and Zeke, they can really wear down teams with the run.
What's the, oh, that tie was a little brutal. Oh, you're facing the Giants again, too. That's kind of rare, the old, the old back to back. I guess with a buy in between. Well, the Commanders down the stretch, they're facing the Giants again in a primetime game. Looks like a Sunday night football game. Then at San Francisco versus Cleveland versus Dallas. I'd love to see, uh, I'd love to see the Commanders into some action here. That'd be, be a different team to kind of see in the playoffs, maybe see them win a game in the playoffs, maybe two. We've got some playoff spot opportunities here. I like Taylor Heineke. I guess Carson Wentz, just not it. I, I think this is it for Carson Wentz. Do the commanders keep going with Heineke in the future? They're kind of building. I feel like there, there, there's something, there's something that happened in there. In in the nation's capital, I like Brian Robinson, Antonio Gibson, a couple of good running backs there. Terry McLaurin is always dangerous. Jahan Dotson's out there. I like Logan Thomas. They've got a pretty. Uh, they've got a. I mean, Chase Young was healthy. You know that could that could be pretty could be a pretty interesting defense out there too. Ah, you Mike kind of wants was sort of hoping that they would be uh, bad this year, so you could see what you have in Sam Howell. I suppose there's always 2023 next year. And there's Sedan Rafaela. That's for you, Mike. Mike F. and the Boston Red Sox. Seems to be after Caleb Williams from, uh, from USC, right here in Southern California, I think, uh, here in the LA area. I think he can't... I mean, he's still pretty young, right? I don't think he can be eligible until after the 2023 college football season, so we'll be in the 2024 NFL Draft. Uh, will there be teams uh, tanking for him, perhaps? There's Edison Paulino, Orin Shimmer, 16 out of 25 for Mike and the Red Sox. There's Wilfred Averas, 19 out of 499, refractor autograph for the White Sox. That's for Sean. Mike's tired of picking the middle of the first round. Thirty-seven out of seventy-five. There is Danny DeAndre for the Twins. That'll be for Bill. All right, we're down to the final quarter of the case. Final three boxes. Good luck, everybody. We're, we're at an hour 35 right now. Thanks to Mike and Steve Burge for keeping me company throughout the break. Thanks to you two. We've got not too much. I'm not missing too much in this, uh, this Dolphins-Chargers game. Chargers are up 3-0. Mike was saying that uh, two is just not looking very good. Yeah, the, the squeaky wheel. Squeaky wheel uh, will sometimes 
get the grease. Herbert's already got 100 yards after the first quarter. And counting? Wow. Add another, what, five to that. in inches they get that and more and get, get down to the Chargers 10 the Dolphins 10 that is yeah Tua does need to figure it out I feel like there was a there was a turning point even after the those scary concussions I feel like it come back and looked good for a little bit and then just kind of hasn't looked good for two or three weeks yeah, Mike needs his help. There's Yasser Mercedes. Phil. Oh, and a redemption. There's MJ Melendez to 250. All right, congratulations to someone. You are due to receive a Bowman Chrome Prospects autograph, ah, no parallel, of Toronto, yeah. Luis Meza for the Toronto Blue Jays. That's gonna be for Joe Simone. Touchdown, is that Mike Williams? Teddy, a resident Dolphins fan, yelling in the background, Miami's not ready. Oh, that's a good catch, two feet down, yeah, both feet down, well inside. And there's Jackson Merrill. Nice one for San Diego. Matthew Sherrod. I don't think I've called the Padres number very often. But there he is. Your number seven Padres prospect. A shortstop. He might have to, he might have to change positions. Well, usually those guys are able to play a lot of positions, right? There's Hendry Mendez to 199. I mean... They're going to move a shortstop to the outfield. Fernando Tatis Jr. They're going to, they're going to have Xander Bogarts. I think it is, but I think I feel like people were saying that they, they didn't put a stamp on that, which is unfortunate. But we'll know. He's a 27th overall pick. I think he was drafted out of high school, so it might be a minute or two before, you know, college players usually we tend to see in a couple years. After a couple years of the minors, you know, they already got some seasoning in college, and then I think the, I think the high school players maybe a little bit longer, maybe three, four years. Jackson Merrill may have to, uh... I wonder what a player like him thinks, you know, when they see, oh, here's, here's Xander Bogarts being locked in for 11 years. And, you know, I know baseball drafting is a little weird just because there's just so many players and just so much, 
so much can happen. You know, in between then, but yeah, they still have them listed as a shortstop on Wikipedia. But you might have to start thinking about uh, might start thinking about changing positions a little bit. I think we, I think we had a Phillies auto early on, Chris. I don't know. We'll see. We'll do a recap after that, that final box back there. But yeah, sometimes there is that 30% of the time, though, for last spot mojo. So he had a lot of shortstop DH Jackson Merrill in in his uh, in his minor league career. Keep an eye on him. Maybe maybe he'll uh, maybe he'll start shifting to to some other positions. Maybe an outfield position or something like that. Hunter Green refractor to 499. Travis. And an orange auto for the Red Sox. 14 out of 25. Daniel McElvenny. That'll be for Michael F. Won that spot in the filler. Got randomized. The Red Sox. And ends up with this kid right here uh, from Chula Vista, a little south of San Diego. And there's Alec Thomas Gold, 16 out of 50. Alec for Joe. G Lo, what's going on, Gabe? How are you? Happy Sunday. Catching us on the tail end of a Bowman Chrome doubleheader. Another doubleheader in the store now. Jaspiescasebreaks.com. If you want to work on that. Here's a Jason Curio Shimmer for Cleveland. Yeah, thankfully there was a second case. And a Jason Curio. Wow. Another one for Michael. That, he, that, that, that's the second Cleveland this is for you he was looking for. Cleveland, this is for you and Mike. All right, let's see what's in that last box. Christian Vaccaro for Joe. There's the, from a Joe to a Joey, Joey Weimer to 499, 312 out of 499. That'll be for the Brew Crew, Matthew Shira, Jason Curio here for Cleveland, and the final box coming up. In the middle of a heated fantasy football playoff game, says Gilo. What do you need? Who do you have? What do you need? You've got Eckler left. What do you need from him? Yeah, my fantasy football season has been pretty, uh, pretty piss poor. In the Jaspi League, not good. In my other league, in my two quarterback league, Non PPR. I was looking good, but injuries finally caught up to me, and then I ended up losing four or five games in a row. I'm, I might win this week. I'm playing Nick's brother. I might win this week, but I'll be tied for a bunch of players for the last playoff spot. I'm, I'm actually, actually, because of Mike Williams, I might be, I might lose this game now. Anyway, even if I win this week, I'll uh, I'll be tied with a bunch of players. 
I'll be tied with a bunch of players, and, and then I think I'll lose tiebreakers. That is a touchdown for Miami. Good defensive play for them. I, 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 I missed it. Oh, he was... The ball came out. And then what happens here? Oh, Tyreek Hill may be held. But the ball came out. But Tyreek... Oh, Tyreek Hill recovered the... Recovered the ball. Wow, the play stands. No flags, nothing. Clean. What a play. Ball pops out and goes into the backfield where Tyree Kill was sitting because he was doing some run blocking. A little bit of run blocking. And then it kind of went back to him. Nice to go to the fastest guy on the field. Touchdown. That was Mostert. I fumbled it. That's crazy. Yeah, Chris is saying it was most of it fumbled. Wow. Did I say hi to Rex? Hi, Rex. That big touchdown play got me all distracted. Yeah, well, you could think LeBron James or Cleveland. This is for you. I don't know. I don't know when I started doing. It. I just, just thought it'd be like a fun little thing. Hey, look at that, Gavin Tonkel, Chris Butler, Philadelphia Phillies, last spot mojo strikes again, seventy percent of the time. Last spot mojo hits a hundred percent of the time. From Brentwood, California, Northern California, Brentwood, not a uh, not not Brentwood here in L.A. I think is just still, still just considered Los Angeles. I don't think Brentwood is, is its own thing. There's Pedro Pineda from Matthew Chirot and the A's to 499. Julio Rodriguez will go to Seattle. That's for Scott. Final mini box and then a recap. There's Rafael Devers. A two ninety nine. That not, could that be like the next homegrown Red Sox free agent that that leaves after the end of next year? Michael with the Red Sox and the last auto for the Reds. Ricardo Cabrera, three out of seventy five. Yellow parallel Cincinnati Reds. Travis with the Red Legs. There's Roderick. There's Eloy, and that is that. Yeah, Rex, that's always a common one. The worst trades ever. Eloy Jimenez, 75. Jeff Bagwell might be one of them, speaking of the Red Sox. There's Roderick Arias for the Yankees. And your recap. Tons of color, so there's a lot of parallels going away, but this is just an autograph and low-numbered card recap. A lot of fun stuff, ladies and gentlemen. Another doubleheader in the store right now. Check it out. Got the red Matt Manning. That was one out of five. There's the Gabriel Moreno. Like the orange inserts here, Wilman Diaz. <laughs> yeah, the Padres could fill a book on, uh, on players that they have traded. I don't think Gary Templeton was, was was bad at the time, but I think to trade Ozzie Smith for it, for him, and was uh, that red shimmer is actually out of ten. I got fooled by that one. It was a Jason Dominguez Bowman ascensions, and a Jordan Walker Bowman ascensions that was numbered to twenty five. That's nice. And that, my friends, is that. That was 2022 Bowman Chrome Baseball Hobby Edition, a two-case break, a double header. Let's play two, as Ernie Banks used to say. Uh, and this is break two, random team two, random team three in the store right now. Um, we're planning on a few fillers and some straight-up spots, but 
you know, we might be able to cancel some fillers too if it gets to that point. So keep plugging away at it and we can knock out another one on jazbeescasebreaks.com. I'm Joe. I'll see you next time for the next one. Did they trade Dave Winfield too, Padres? Anyway, I'll see you next time for the next one. Bye-bye.